Well, as Chip said, my name is Jordan Rittmeyer. I've uh, lived here in Ephraim, Utah for about four years now. I uh, serve with Tri Grace Ministries. Um, what's interesting is what really brought my attention, what really brought my awareness to the need of, of uh, sharing my faith, sharing my worldview. Um, I'm going to step away from the mic here. Uh, sharing my worldview with, uh, with people is... Um, an organization that, I, that, that, sh- that, that teaches about worldviews. And that organization is called Summit Ministries. And I attended a seminar there, a two-week seminar uh, at Summit get Ministries. Behind mic, so get behind the mic. So everybody can hear you. Okay. Um, I attended uh, Summit Ministries in 2012, or 2007. And, um, you know, what really challenged me was that there are other worldviews outside of my worldview that people really do look at as far as um, it being valid or having validity, yet it was very different uh, than my worldview. And so that's what really launched me into looking at ministry as something that I would want to pursue uh, full time. And so that's what we're going to look at today is what is a worldview? What consists of a worldview? And how does that, what does that look like when it comes to um, Mormonism? So the question is, does, let's see here, um, technology, does everyone have a worldview? And the answer is yes, everyone does have a worldview. But if everyone has a worldview, then that means that there are billions of worldviews out there. There are billions of worldviews out there. So how do we defend a biblical worldview in the midst of billions of worldviews? First, we need to define what a worldview is. And there are tons of definitions out there from secular sources, from Christian sources, that define what a worldview is. So I defined it in this way, as simplistically as I could. A worldview is an overarching mindset of how a person views and functions within the world they live in. It is a mindset that is overarching with how they view themselves and how they function within that world. I would say this, that most people when they function within their worldview, don't realize that they're functioning within their worldview. They don't think about the fact that they operate within, within their worldview, coming up with all these different answers, saying, well, I'm going to make this decision based on this, or I'm going to make this decision based on that. They just kind of do it. It's, it's kind of automatic. So without realizing that they operate within their worldview, people come under false pretenses false speculations, and false assumptions about the world in which they live. They don't sit down and look at what their worldview actually teaches at times. So what does a worldview look like? What is an illustration? So this is a picture of rose-colored glasses. If you've heard the term, take off your rose-colored glasses, you know that a person is looking at something that is not quite right, or the way in which they're looking at something is not quite right. Okay, so this is the illustration that I kind of want us to think through when we think of a worldview or even our worldview. A worldview is like a set of glasses or lenses that we look through and we see the world. We try to make sense of things going on in the world through these lenses, And worldviews affect how people view certain issues, such as abortion, same-sex marriage, adultery, money, family, God, heaven, hell, and salvation. And the list goes on and on and on. One thing that I want to make clear, and don't want to assume of anyone here, but sometimes we can get the idea that people who do not hold to or do not have a biblical worldview are stupid. Mormons are not stupid. They're not dumb. They are operating within a worldview that is predominantly accepted within a culture that they live in. And they may have never been challenged before. Their worldview has maybe have never been challenged. And so that is what we're doing here. 
We are challenging their false precepts, their false speculations, and their false assumptions. So what happens when their worldview gets challenged? Their rose-colored glasses, as we see in this picture behind me, start to crack. And eventually, they're going to have to make a decision. They either have to keep wearing those glasses with cracks in them, and even though they're broken and they can't see as clearly, maybe within their own worldview, as they once did, they, 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 they keep them on. They, they prefer to look through them. Or we can invite them to remove them for a moment. Invite them to take off their rose-colored, broken, cracked glasses and put on a new set for a moment. Invite them to, to put on the glasses that, that we have, a biblical lens or a biblical worldview. But it doesn't just end with Mormons. It doesn't just end with one people group. There are billions of people, as I've said. And there are billions of worldviews. And when we're on the streets, most of the people we run into are Mormon or were Mormon. But the, I have met atheists. I have met people who claim to be Jewish. I've met agnostics. And there needs to be a way in which we address those other people as well. Before we go into that, I want to look at what world what worldviews exist. There are five categories that we can put all these worldviews in. So I want to look at that really fast and then um, uh, move on to why we need to uh, have focus and clarity. So the five worldviews, five major worldviews, are naturalism, which atheism, agnosticism, and existentialism falls under. Next is pantheism, Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, New Age, and consciousness. This idea of just, we're just here, floating around. It's, it's, it's our perception of life. There's theism, which is Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Belief in one God. There's spiritism and polytheism, which includes thousands of religions. And I would argue that Mormonism probably falls within that category somewhere. Lastly, there's postmodernism and secular humanism, which is marked by skepticism and individualism. And underneath that would be free thinkers or loose thinkers with shifting views. People who claim, I don't have a worldview because my views shift all the time. Well, you do. You do have a worldview, um, and they would be under the postmodern secular humanism. So, like I said before, each of these categories contains thousands of worldviews. And the point I want to make here is that a person can take one pair of worldview lenses or glasses off, which is made up of false pretense, speculation, and assumptions, and put on another pair of glasses or worldview with, whose prescription is made up of the same stuff, a false pretense, speculation, and assumptions. It's just a different flavor or just a different color. Again, we need to invite them for a moment to put on or to take a biblical worldview, putting on the lens of a biblical worldview and looking at the world through the word of God. And in doing so, I believe that worldview and looking at it through the, world of, uh, looking at it through the word of God would, will bring focus and clarity to the person and how they perceive the world to be. So, this is an example. All around these glasses is just blurry. It's kind of yucky. And you know what? It's not rose-colored either. It's not tinted a different way. It, it, the, the colors are real. The colors are exact. But there's clarity. You can see what's going on. You can see the different people. You can see the dangers. And that brings realism to life. So I want to play a clip here. And before I do, I want to, I want to mention something. I found out uh, last year that I'm colorblind. I had no idea that I was colorblind, none whatsoever. And I was getting my glasses fit, you know, fitted and get my eyes checked and the optometrist said, hey, have you ever taken a colorblind test? I'm like, nope, I have no idea what that is. He's like, well, why don't you take one? First page, I pass. The second page, I kind of pass. 
I mean, fail. The third page, I completely fail. And he looked at me and he goes, you are colorblind. He's like, you're not just a little bit of color, you are colorblind. And I'm like, huh, I had no idea. And you know what's interesting is, had he not shown me the test, had he not suggested it, I would have never thought of it. I would have never thought that I was colorblind. But here I am, I'm colorblind. And now that I know that, it's okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not freaking out. But it, there is some part in the back of my mind that's like, you know, I wonder what I'm missing. I wonder what I'm not seeing. Tie-dye. Tie-dye. <laughs> there you go. So I want to play a video clip. And no, this is not me. Um, this is of a gentleman. Um, so watch this clip and just think about how this might relate to the person that you're talking to on the street tonight. Go ahead, Brett. Can you turn it up? Hear that? It's not pink, is it? Listen to what he says at the end of the video. What did he say at the end there? It was all fuzz and haze. He didn't clearly see. He couldn't see a TV screen very well. And you looked at his reaction, and it was just, it, it was joy. I mean, it was, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't jumping for joy, but it was, it was realization that, wow, my vision has been corrected. And I imagine that's what it's like for a lot of you who were in Mormonism at one point. And when you look at the truth and when you see the truth and the light bulb goes on, it's almost unbelievable. It's almost just unreal. Now, I've never experienced that. I don't know what that's like. I don't know if that's fake, but it doesn't look fake to me. So keep that in mind when we're talking with people on the streets and when God opens their eyes and lets them see the truth. That is, that is what they're going through. And that just is amazing to me. So when they look, when they look and they see the, the worldview, the way in which the Bible explains um, our world, honestly, it's not a pretty picture. But it's clear. We're lost. We are, we are in sin. We are separated from God. But there's a redemptive, redempt, redemptive aspect to it that's just so beautiful. And that is Jesus Christ died to save us. And it was he who saved us. We didn't save ourselves. We don't save, our, save ourselves. And the Bible gives us an outline for how that works. 
But it also gives us an outline for who God is, who man is, what God's relationship to mankind is, and what the purpose of, of, of life is for man. And when we look at these questions, when we look and, and answer these questions from a biblical perspective, we get a clearer image of the world in which we live from God's perspective, not man's perspective. So as an overview, the basic questions that make up a worldview is who is God? Who is man? What is God's relationship to man? What is man's purpose in life? And where does man go after he dies? So when we look at a, at a Christian worldview, how would a Christian answer that? We can go through and we can answer each one. So I'm going to just briefly answer those. And then we're going to look at a Mormon worldview. And you can do this with a Mormon. You can do this with, with an atheist. You can do this with an agnostic. And you can help them see there is a difference. There is a difference in perception. There's a difference in assumption. There's a difference in, in reality from what they're looking at when, 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 look, when faced with truth. So as a Christian, how would a Christian answer who is God? God is the uncreated being. He's a father and son, Holy Spirit. He's one God, uncreated. Who is man? Man is a creation of God who is made in the image of God. What is God's relationship to man? God's relationship to man is that he's the creator and not only the creator, but he's a redeemer. He has redeemed the world to himself. What is man's purpose in life? To come into a right relationship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ in faith and to glorify him as we live our lives. Where does man go after he dies? Well, if he's in Christ, if he's saved in a new creation, he gets to be with God in heaven. If man is not in Christ, he's separated from God forever in hell. So how would a Mormon answer this? Who is God? Well, as we know, God, Mormons say that God was once a man. Flesh and bone. He had to go through all the, all the works that we go through. And who is man? Well, man, yeah, he's a creation of God. But really, we are, as Rob Savolka likes to say, God, little gods in embryo. What is God's relationship to man? Well, we know that he created us in uh, the preexistence, but there's been a, there's been a, a veil or that God blinds us so that we can't remember the preexistence. We're sent here to earth to see if we are worthy enough to even go back to, to God to be in the celestial kingdom with Heavenly Father. What is man's purpose in life? Well, exalt oneself through good works and temple work to get into the celestial uh, heaven and ultimately become a God one day and rule the planet. And where does man go after he dies? Most everyone goes to one of three levels of heaven, depending on how one lives their lives, or if they have a true understanding of the Mormon church and they leave it, they go to outer darkness. Yay! So as you can see, just by these basic questions, there's a difference in how these worldviews line up. And it's not just Christianity versus Mormonism, it's Christianity versus the whole world. And you can use these basic questions just to even start a conversation with someone to show them that there is a difference. There is a difference in how we perceive the world. And it's important. And here's why it's important. Here's why worldviews matter. The battle is for the mind, the heart, and the soul. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God's word transforms our mind. We need to understand that we are all born in this world blind. We're all born into this world of sin, and we need a vision correction. And God's word is that. And it not only does it correct our vision, but it transforms our mind. Philippians 4, 6-8 says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
One thing I like to ask Mormons or anyone in general who doesn't know Jesus is, do you have peace? Do you have hope? Do you have joy? And a lot of the time they say no. But knowing God, understanding the, how the world works and what the world is through a biblical worldview, we can have peace knowing who God is and our hearts and our minds are guarded in Christ Jesus. It says this in verse, uh, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lo- lovely, whatever is good uh, repute, let there, uh, if there's any excellence and, any, and, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The world has a hard time dwelling on the things of God because it doesn't see God. It doesn't know the nature of God. It doesn't see, um, the world doesn't see the world correctly. It's blind. In 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 7, which is our theme verse, it talks about the blindness of man. And that's not, it, it's, from, it's from Satan. It's from, it's from sin. And the world is blind. But we need to remember something in this, in this battle for the mind and the heart and the soul. And that's what Ephesians 6.12 says. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil within the heavenly realms. It is a, it is a, it is a spiritual fight. It is a spiritual battle. And so in order to fight that, we must fight through a biblical lens with the mindset of Christ Lastly, I want to end here. There is hope. In Psalm 146, verse 8, and we see this all throughout Jesus' ministry as well. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord opens eyes of the blind. We see Jesus physically do it, and we see Jesus spiritually do it. And so I want to encourage you that when you're on the streets tonight, to think through about your worldview, to dig deep and think about why do I believe what I believe? And then to ask the person you're talking with to do the same, to show them that there is a difference, that it isn't the same worldview, and to help them and ask them to take off their Mormon worldview glasses and to peer through the biblical lens at the rest of the world. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time.